Now, before the moving on topic, uh, let's quickly revisit what we have discussed in previous lecture. So in previous lecture, we have discussed amide hydrolysis. Hydrolysis of amide through BSC2, based catalyzed, base catalyzed, acyl nitrogen bond breaking by molecule. So that we have discussed in last lecture. Then we have also discussed ASC2, amide hydrolysis through ASC2 mechanism. ASC2 means acid catalyzed acyl nitrogen bond breaking by molecule. So this is a amide. First, this amide happens to be a protonation and gives the protonated amide. Now this protonated amide then attacked by water molecules because we are discussing the hydrolysis. Water molecule already present in the reaction. Clear? When water molecule attacks on this sp2 hybridized carbon, which is electrophilic in nature, leads to the formation of tetraadyl intermediate. So this step is steric sensitive because less sterically hindered molecule converted into the more sterically hindered intermediate. So tetraadyl intermediate is always sterically hindered because it is sp3 hybridized. Later on, there is a deprotonation reaction occurs, gives this tetraadyl species. Then this tetraadyl species undergoes the fast protonation reaction. Now this intermediate has choice whether the oxygen get protonated or nitrogen get protonated. Due to the low electronegativity of nitrogen, the lone pair present on the nitrogen is labile. Highly reactive, get protonated. Now, oxygen, lone pair push to ammonia to leave from the molecule and gives this protonated acid. And final reaction is deprotonation and gives acid and ammonia. But we know that the ammonia is basic enough to abstract this highly acidic proton and gives the stable ammonium salt. So, this is a amide hydrolysis in presence of acid or acid hydrolysis of amide. It is an irreversible reaction because the last step is irreversible. So this step is an irreversible step. So this is about A acid 2 acid catalyzed acyl nitrogen bond breaking bimolecular reaction. So this second step is a rate determining step and the rate determining step involves two species one is protonated amide and the water molecule that's why it is a bimolecular reaction is it clear so let's move further in this class as i said earlier we are going to discuss another important reaction that is cope elimination. Okay. We have also discussed the hydrolysis of thalamic acid. So this is the thalamic acid. We already discussed which carbonyl undergo the protonation reaction. Because this lone pair is labile in nature. When it transferred here, this carbonyl get easily protonated. And gives this protonated amide. 
later on there is intramolecular reaction is takes place and gives a five member ring so later on this deprotonation deprotonation step occurs gives this intermediate again the same mechanism this nitrogen get protonated and this oxygen lone pair push to ammonia to leave from the molecule gives this protonated anhydride this is a protonated anhydride which undergo the deprotonation reaction and the last step is irreversible reaction so whenever the anhydride undergo the hydrolysis because we are discussing the hydrolysis so this anhydride undergo the hydrolysis gives thalic acid this is a thalic acid okay so these two mechanisms are very important amide hydrolysis through ac2 and this hydrolysis of thalamic acid okay so in this class we are going to learn elimination reaction so first of all i'm going to explain the cope elimination it is elimination reaction definitely a multiple bond is formed during the reaction now this cop elimination is a beta elimination and the stereo electronic requirement for this cop elimination is hydrogen which are going to abstract it and the base should be seen periplanar later on i will explain what is this seen periplanar okay so in this reaction amine oxide in cope elimination amine oxide decomposed on heating gives alkene this is a product that we are obtain in cope elimination so in most of elimination the product is multiple bonded compound like alkene and this reaction is an intramolecular elimination because base is present within the molecule and this reaction is similar to the pyrolysis of ester so ester on heating also gives the eliminated product
So let's see what happened in the reaction. So this is the molecule. Here we have amine oxide. This is the amine oxide. Now this carbon is referred as an alpha carbon. This is a beta carbon. And this O minus act as a base. Abstract this beta hydrogen. And this sigma electrons transfer here, and this bond is break. So when I hit this molecule, what happened? Gives alkene as a byproduct. So here, this group remain as it is. Now here we have CH. Now this sigma electrons transferred here. So that's why here we have double bond CH2. And the byproduct is N OH Me2. This is the byproduct. Now this reaction proceeds through a five member transition state. What happened? This oxygen first form a bond, partial bond with this hydrogen. So here we have this hydrogen, this oxygen, this CH2 is remain as it is and any because this oxygen has partial negative charge as a result this nitrogen has positive charge so this negative charge form first bond with this hydrogen and gives five member transition state this is a five member transition state. One, two, three, four, and five. This is just transition state. It is not an intermediate. It is a transition state. The product obtained here in cop elimination is alkene. It is the simplest reaction, but the proton undergo the abstraction and this O minus should be seen periplanet to each other. Seen periplanet means hydrogen atom and this base O minus should be on the same side. So when I compare the Pope elimination with E2 reaction, Pope elimination with E2 elimination, Both are beta elimination. Also referred as a one to elimination. E2 
to elimination is also beta elimination. Also referred as a one to elimination. The stereoelectronic requirement for E2 reaction is anti periplan. That means base and the proton must be anti periplan. For the cope elimination, the abstracted proton and the base should be seen periplan. Means should be on the same side. In case of E2 elimination, more substituted product. is measured. In case of pop elimination, this is a very important point, less substituted product. Is measured. In the sense alkene. So more substituted alkene is a major product in case of E2 elimination. In the COP elimination, less substituted alkene is a major. That means it gives the Hoffman product. Hoffman product is a major. While in case of E2 elimination, Z0. Is a major product. Hoffman product means less substituted alkene is your major product. It's re also referred as a Hoffman product. Or more substituted alkene product is referred as a Z save product. So in E2 elimination, we always get more substituted alkene as a major product. While in COPE elimination, less substituted alkene is a major product. And this is also important point that in case of E2 elimination, the hydrogen which are going to abstract in the base should be anti periplanar to each other. While in case of pop elimination, the base and the abstracted proton should be seen periplanar, means same side. So here, this hydrogen and the oxygen must be on the same side. Let's see more examples of this pop elimination. Suppose I Heat the NN dimethyl butyl amine oxide at 150 degrees centigrade. Let's see what will be our products. This is NN dimethyl butyl amine. So this is our starting material NN dimethyl NN dimethyl butyl amine. And this undergo the reaction with H2O2 
hydrogen peroxide in methanol as a solvent or can also react with metachloro per benzoic acid MCPBA. So both are oxidizing as in it, it oxidizes this nitrogen gives NN dimethyl butyl amine oxide. So this is our NN dimethyl butylamine oxide. Which on heating at 150 degrees centigrade. Let's see the possibilities here. Now this carbon is alpha, this carbon is beta, but this carbon is also beta. As I said earlier, the pop elimination is a beta elimination. So this internal base can abstract the proton from this beta carbon or abstract the proton from this beta carbon. And we get two products. I'm getting my point. I'm getting my point because here there is a two possibilities. So this base can abstract the proton from this beta carbon or abstract the proton from this beta carbon. Two possibilities and leads to the formation of two products. When I abstract the proton from this beta carbon, I get a double bond here. So CH3, CH2, CH, double bond, CH2. Okay, so this is a first. This is, suppose, root A. So this is a product obtained from root A. Now, when I abstract the proton from this beta carbon, I get different product. So one proton get abstracted, CH double bond CH CH. So this product this product is obtained when I abstract the beta carbon from uh, hydrogen from this beta carbon. Root B. So here. What we get? Two products. And of course, this will be our byproduct. So, this two product is important for us. So this is a 1-butene. And this is 2-butene. Now you have to tell me which one is measured. 1-butene is measured or 2-butene is measured.
Please give your answer in chat box. Which one is measured? And what will be the stereoelectronic requirement for this reaction? As there is no problem because we have sigma bond, we can easily rotate this molecule around the sigma bond. The question is, which one is measured here? Whether 1 butene or 2 butene? In which one is Hoffman product and which one is JTSAV product? Give your opinion, give your idea about copper elimination, what we have learned. Give your comments in chat box. Bahara Kusbu says one butene. Any other? Is there one butene as a measure product in top elimination? Yes or no? Please respond fast. One is Sruti says one duty. Okay. Any one of you have different opinion? And please tell me why one butene is a measure? Why one butene is a measure? These are the common questions asked in the interviews. Why one butene is a measure? It is a less substituted. Of course, it is a less substituted. It is a less substituted. That's why it is measure. That you want to say. Please remember the learning process is a bi-directional, not a unidirectional. You should have to respond and check your concept about cop elimination of course the less substituted absolutely right and this is a more substituted my question is is one butene is less substituted, that's why it is measured? Or there is another factors? Yeah, of course it is a Hoffman product. And this is a ZZ product. It's same product. But this is not an answer. Why Why the COP elimination always give less substituted alkene as a measure? What is the reason? The reason is 
So this product, one butane product is formed when the base and the abstracted hydrogen both are seen periplane. And this two butane is formed when abstracted proton the base both are anti periplane. This is a very important concept. So this product is only formed when the abstracted proton in the base both are anti periplanar to each other. And this product, less substituted alkene or Hoffman product, is formed when the base and abstracted proton both are seen periplanar to each other. Now please now now please tell me why one butene is a major one in case of Pope elimination. Why not two beauty? For that you should know the stereoelectronic requirement of pop elimination. What is the stereoelectronic requirement for the pop elimination? What is the stereoelectronic requirement? We have written here. This is called stereoelectronic requirement for the COPE elimination. And this is a stereoelectronic requirement for the E2 elimination. Now, please give the answer. Why one butene is measured in case of pope elimination? When the cop elimination occurs, when the cop elimination occurs in the molecule, Sin planar means if I draw a Newman projection, if I draw the Newman projection, Now you have to tell me which confirmation I have shown here. Which confirmation I have shown here. First one is
respond fast So here I have shown you the two confirmations. Staggered and Eclipse, very good. Which one is Staggered and which one is Eclipse? Okay, so here I have drawn two confirmation in Newman projection. First one is Eclipse. Second one is stagger. Okay, so whenever here we have hydrogen and here we have O minus, or another sense you also can refer as a living group. Okay, because this part is also act as a living group. Okay, so here the, both these hydrogen and this base or living group you can also write as a base both are on the same side also refers the eclipse form also refer to the scene periplanar and this confirmation gives less substituted product or less substituted alkene or we can also say that it is gives Hoffman product now suppose here I have a living group or base and here I have hydrogen so both are referred as a anti periplanar to each other And this anti periplanar confirmation gives more substituted alkene. Or you can also refer as a Z save product. As a measure, okay. So what is the stereoelectric electronic requirement with the cope elimination? This hydrogen atom and this base should be on the same periplanar. This is a stereoelectronic requirement for the cope elimination. So whenever both are in the same, same periplanar, we always give the less substituted alkene as a measure. This is a simple concept. So this Confirmation is a requirement for the cope elimination. And this confirmation require for the E2 elimination. And this C in an anti is referred as a stereo electronic requirement. Referred as a stereo electronic requirements. So if anyone can ask you, 
why cop elimination gives less substituted alkene or hopman product is a measure what is the reason what is the reason because this cop elimination proceed through a seen periplanar transition state means the proton and the base internal base must be on the same side and whenever both are on the same side is always give the less substituted alkene as a measure product if it is on opposite side it gives a more substituted alkene as a measure product so this is a very important concept of course it is not in your syllabus just we have foundation of the cop elimination in our syllabus but we should know it why less substituted alkene is a major product in case of cop elimination the reason is its transition state to understand the product formation we have to understand transition state that are involved in the cop elimination and what is the stereo electronic requirement for the cop elimination i hope so it is clear now okay i hope so it is clear why we get one butene is a measure in the cop elimination now what will be your answer okay definitely because cop elimination proceed to the seen periplanar transition state or the stereo electronic requirement for the cop elimination is a seen periplanar that means the extracted proton and the internal base must be on the same side or seen periplanar and whenever any molecule proceed to the seen periplanar transition state it always gives less substituted alkene is a major product in case of all the elimination reactions all the elimination reactions and this is a very important concept in elimination reaction okay is there any doubt to is there any doubt clear yeah? okay fine now let's move further and discuss one more example in this cop elimination now i want to prepare methylene cyclo hexane from this molecule so the name of this molecule is nn dimethyl cyclohexyl methylamine nn dimethyl cyclohexyl methylamine first of all we have to make this substrate suitable for the cop elimination for that we have to carry out the oxidation so react with h2o2 in methanol or the best reagent is mcpba metachlorobenzoic acid mcpba in methanol this is the best reagent for the oxidation of this nn dimethyl cyclohexyl methylamine what it gives amine oxide and here this nitrogen become positive because the lone pair get oxidized so this lone pair is used to form a bond between nitrogen and oxygen 
lone pair is not oxidized but lone pair is used to form a bond between nitrogen and oxygen okay uh, let me write the structure for meta chloroperbenzoic acid and here we have cl so this linkage is used for the per acids so this is a meta chloro per benzoic acid and this oxygen is not nucleophilic in nature but this oxygen is electrophilic in nature this oxygen is electrophilic in nature okay so this lone pair can easily attacks on the oxygen okay and gives this product now what happen next when it is heated about 150 degree centigrade it undergoes the elimination reaction but keep remember this carbon is alpha and here we have only one beta carbon this one is beta carbon and this is our living group or you can say that it is also act as a internal base so base here we have one hydrogen beta hydrogen so base abstract this proton this carbon hydrogen bond is break transfer the electron here and this will eliminate so only one product is form here because only one beta carbon present in this molecule so here we have double bond ch2 here and ch3 ch3 and oh and n dimethyl hydroxyl amine this is our by product and n dimethyl hydroxyl amine okay and this is our product that is methylene cyclohexane methylene cyclohexane okay and give 88 percent is of it this is nn dimethyl hydroxyl amine so this is about pop elimination here of course we require the low temperature than the pyrolytic elimination of ester in case of pyrolytic elimination of ester we require the very high temperature so amines can easily oxidize because the nitrogen lone pair is labile in nature okay is there any doubt in this reaction okay sorry this no one pair is not attack on this oxygen on this oxygen okay
Is it clear? Is there any doubt in this pop elimination? Let's quickly revise it. So pop elimination is uh, one type of beta elimination, stereo electronic requirement for the pop elimination is a seam periplanar means abstracted proton and the base must be on the same side, must be seam periplanar. So when amide oxide on heating undergo the decomposition gives alkene as a product. So this is the reactant molecule in pop elimination. So this oxygen is negatively in charge. First, it abstract this proton and forms pi member transition state, which undergo the decomposition, gives alkene and NN dimethyl hydroxyl amine as a byproduct. The important concept for the elimination, COP elimination is the stereoelectronic requirement is a seen periplan. And COP elimination is an example of PET elimination, also referred as a 1 2 elimination. And the product obtained in the COP elimination is a less substituted alkene is a mesa, while more substituted alkene is a minor product in COP elimination. Because COP elimination is proceed to the same periplanar transition state, and same periplanar transition state always gives less substituted alkene as a measure problem. Then how we can convert this NN dimethyl butyl amine into the NN dimethyl amine oxide, NN dimethyl butyl amine oxide by the reaction with H2O2 or metachloroperbenzoic acid. This is the best reaction. So when this NN dimethyl butyl amine oxide on heating gives the two product, one butene and two butene. But one butene is a major and the two butene is a minor product. Because this one butene is formed by seen periplanar transition state, while this two butene is formed by anti periplanar transition state. And the COPE elimination, the stereoelectronic requirement is seen periplane means this hydrogen and this base must be seen to each other and the seen periplane transition state always gives the less substituted alkene as a massive product this is another example of pop elimination when this nn dimethyl cyclohexyl methylamine on reaction with h2o2 or metachloroperbenzoic acid gives and then dimethyl cyclohexylamine oxide, which on heating gives methylene cyclohexane. Keep remember, it is a beta elimination. So this carbon, with, which is attached to this living group, referred as the alpha carbon. The next carbon is beta. So in this molecule, we have only one beta carbon. So there is no possibility to form a second product. So only this product is formed that is methyl cyclohexane in 88% of the zoppel. And NN dimethyl hydroxylamine is a bio. And this reaction occurs in presence of DMSO as a solvent. Because we have to heat the reaction at high temperature about 150 degrees centigrade. So DMSO can do well. The next reaction and this elimination part is a Chuge elimination.
Chugev reaction. So what is the Chugev reaction? It is a pyrolysis of Vantec ester. Pyrolysis means heating. So when we heat this molecule, xanthate ester gives alkene. And carbonyl sulfide as well as methyl mercaptan as a byproduct. Methyl mercaptan. So these are the products are obtained when xanthate ester undergo the pyrolysis reaction. Means it. So this xanthate ester decompose on heating gives alkene, carbonyl sulfide and methyl mercaptan. Okay, but this xanthate ester also require very low temperature than this carboxylic ester. So what are this reaction? So suppose this is alcohol, this alcohol first react with the base, base will abstract this proton gives oxide anion. Now this oxide anion then react with carbon disulfide C S2. So this is the structure of carbon disulfide. And what happened? This negative charge attack on this carbon. This pi bond is break. What happened are CH2, CH2O, and this sulfur become negative charge, and this negative charge stabilized by the counter cation Na+. Which is then react with methyl iodide. SN2 reaction is occurs, sulfur negative act as a nucleophile and this carbon as del positive. And the I minus is a good living group, it leaves from the molecule. carbon, sulfur, sulfur and here we have methyl. So this is known as a methyl xanthate ester. Methyl xanthate ester. Now this xanthate ester on heating about 100 to 200 degrees centigrade. Gives 
alquil. carbonyl sulfide and methyl mercaptan or methanethyl it is an also it is also an example of beta elimination this is a beta elimination reaction because this is our leaving group this is alpha carbon that one is beta carbon this is the product is obtained that is alkene and here the transition state involves six member cyclic intermediate let's see what happen okay so i am explain you how this reaction is occurs ch here we have ch2 so i'm going to write this structure this one so r ch2 ch2 r ch2 ch2 but i write this hydrogen in this fashion then we have oxygen here we have oxygen then we have carbon oxygen then carbon double bond sulfur so double bond sulfur then we have sulfur and methyl then we have sulfur and methyl okay so what happened first sulfur has lone pair so that lone pair can interact with this hydrogen form a hydrogen bonding and forms a six member transition state this is our transition state in chugev elimination now when we heat this intermediate around 100 to 200 degree centigrade it undergoes the decomposition means this bond abstract the proton this sigma bond is break transfer its sigma electrons to this carbon carbon sigma bond and this bond is break and transfer its sigma electrons to this carbon oxygen sigma bond that means this sigma bond transfer its electrons to here let's see what happen so here we have r ch here we have double bond ch2 what happen here oxygen double bond carbon here we have single bond sulfur and hydrogen and here we have as ch3 so this is a unstable molecule what happened this sigma electrons transfer here and this sulfur abstract this proton let's see what it gives so carbon double bond sulfur double bond oxygen this sulfur abstract this proton so here we have hydrogen so this is a carbonyl sulfide this is a methane thiol or methyl mercaptan this is our alkene And this is a carbonyl sulfide this product is carbonyl sulfide
and this is a methyl mercaptan. Also known as a methanethiol. Then, so this is all about Chugev elimination. Chugev elimination also refer as a pyrolysis of xanthate ester. Requires very low temperature actually than that of ester pyrolysis. So this is an oral reaction. So whenever we have alcohol, if we want to prepare alkene from the alcohol, we have to carry out the Chugev elimination. So first this alcohol on reaction with base gives this anion. This anion when react with the carbon disulfide give this intermediate which is then react with the methyl iodide give this methyl xanthate ester which on heating decomposes and gives alkene carbonyl sulfide and methanthal. So this question may be asked in the one mark, what will be the byproducts in Chugev elimination? This question is frequently asked in the examination. The byproducts in Chugev elimination, carbonyl disulfide, carbonyl sulfide, sorry, and methanthal. So one mark question, or short question asked from here the byproducts along with alkene along with okay so this is all about reaction mechanism chapter uh, Tomorrow we are going to discuss few name reactions that are newly introduced in your syllabus. Okay, if you have any doubt regarding the cop elimination or Chugev elimination, any concept that you could not understand, what is the cop elimination? What is the Chugev elimination? Okay, what is the oral reaction here? R CH2 CH2 OH. So what is the first reagent? Base. Second reagent is carbon disulfide. Third reagent is methyl iodide. The fourth one is heating condition gives the product like this alkene carbon carbonyl sulfide and methanthal and all these reactions are referred as a pi mechanism is referred as a internal elimination. I stand for internal elimination. So co-op elimination is also followed EI mechanism. EI mechanism. Okay. Is there any doubt in this concept? So today we have talk here. Next class we are going to learn Noval gel condensation and Claisen condensation. Is there any doubt? Any question from your side?